just gonna go over some things that uh, you should probably look at before you buy your truck mainly in the $500 to $5,000 price range maybe you don't have the greatest uh, amount of mechanical knowledge and you want a cheap vehicle maybe you want to get something to learn on whatever the case may be we're going to go over a little checklist rust general maintenance drivetrain condition front end condition transmission condition easy and this whole doing this whole little uh check over shouldn't take more than 10 15 minutes and I know it's uncomfortable to do all this at somebody's house when you're looking at their truck and you're not paying a lot for the truck. You know, a lot of people say if you're paying under five grand, you shouldn't look at, that's retarded. You should look at uh, the vehicle and make sure it's good for you, no matter what. So rust is the main thing here. Um, this is the most important thing to me personally. But again, you know, who am I? So. What I do for rust checking is I'll get along the frame here. Do this side. This side's a lot worse. I check the entire frame. On Rangers, look at these leaf spring shackles. Look at the frame. Now this this looks scary here, but this is just surface rust. You'll know when it's not just surface rust. Look at the sides and look underneath too. See this? That's not surface rust. And, you know, you'll be the judge of how uh, bad your rust is, but really look underneath, look inside, look on the outside of your frame. And uh, really get a good idea of how much rust is on this truck. Look at the bolts on things. If you've got one of these stupid, uh, bed liners like my truck came with you want to look at the underside of the bed a lot of times people put these in and uh to hide rust on the bed but uh you know rust a lot of times people aren't aware of their truck being rusted so they'll you know they might not be trying to screw you they just don't know you know not a lot of people understand about it not a lot of people know about how vehicles work and problems with vehicles so it's kind of your job to figure it out so definitely check for rust. Next thing, you know, in my opinion here that's important is to check over the engine and transmission. If it's an automatic, check the fluid, see how it shifts, smell the fluid, does it smell burnt? Um, I'll get to the manual transmission in a minute. It's not as hard to check over, but the engine, pretty easy. You know, listen to it run. Get by the exhaust pipe and smell the exhaust. Is it burning oil? Is it burning coolant? You'll know by smelling that. Is it smoking, right? Even get under here and brap the throttle a little bit. And a lot of times when you rev it up a little bit, it'll shoot smoke out. You know, that'll be a key on how it burns oil. At idle, sometimes they won't smoke, right? But, uh, you know, Easy stuff. Check the oil. The engine oil tells a lot about uh, a vehicle. And I'm not saying redline it either when you uh, do that. Just rev it up a little bit, like two or three grand. See if it puts out any kind of smoke. See what kind of smell comes out of it. You know. If the oil looks like chocolate milk, you may have a problem with a head gasket. But if it looks good, that doesn't mean you're clear of a head gasket either. That's where you look for the smoke. Sometimes, you know, a head gasket will just send cooling into the cylinders. They can break anywhere. Now check your antifreeze. That's pretty bad looking there. That doesn't necessarily mean head gasket. That just means cooling system neglect. You know, see how my coolant's green here? If the radiator looks like this, your coolant's probably not going to be green. That just means that I flushed it. But, uh, you know, rust in there, that'll mean you may need a radiator at some point. Maybe some of the fins in there are clogged up with rust. You may need a heater core at some point. But that's not the end of the world. You can always flush your cooling system. Where it is a concern is that if you see smoke coming out of there, it smells like antifreeze, 
and this is out of coolant. If you don't see smoke and it is low on coolant, look for a leak somewhere. Coolant leaks are pretty easy to find. When they dry up, they kind of turn white. It's really easy to notice them. Still something to check. I'll even, I'll take the oil cap off. And if there's like condensation or milk and stuff in here, and uh, the oil looks fine, and it's not smoking white smoke like coolant smoke, I will, uh, you know, ask the owner about their driving habits. And see, nine times out of 10, when you see that on the oil cap, it's just been, you know, short trips, driven in short trips. And, uh, but if the oil's milky, that's milky, and this is low on coolant, you probably got a head gasket going there. You know, just listen to the engine. Is it knocked? Does it tick? Listen to the pulleys, listen to the belts. It's got a timing belt. Look at the timing belt. Is it cracked up and broken? You know, these have to crack quite a bit before they break. Ask the owner about maintenance. You know, when has this been done? When's the timing belt been done? Have you ever done the clutch? Have you ever done front end work? All that stuff. Next, you want to check front end play. I bring a floor jack with me. And uh, first I'll get under here and I'll just visibly inspect the, uh, visually inspect the tie rod boots, the tie rods, the ball joints, and uh, see if we've got a lot of torn boots. If they look factory at whatever 300,000 miles, or if they look like they've been replaced. The next thing I'll do is I'll take my floor jack and I'll jack it up a bit, get the wheel off the ground and check for ball joint and tie rod play. It's very easy. Just grab on one side at the, uh, this is for tie rods, nine o'clock, three o'clock, push with one hand, pull with the other, back and forth. If you feel any play, any clunks, look in there and you'll be able to tell. Ball joints is 12 and six, do the same thing. If you feel any play, any clunks, look in there and watch them move. Why I say look in there is because then if you go all around it and you feel play, it's probably a wheel bearing. And the chances are that you're gonna have wheel bearing play in an older truck because these are not like modern wheel bearings that are press in. They're like old trailer wheel bearings. And if you don't know about those, you have to pack them with grease and manually adjust them. And uh, nobody really does that on trucks or cars that have them. So you're probably gonna have wheel bearing play. It's really, you know, if you feel the play, don't let it freak you out. Look in there and make sure that nothing else is moving. And it's just the wheel moving. And uh, you'll probably just have to pack the wheel bearings again. I've had to do that on both of these cheap trucks that I've owned. So all pretty simple, right? You may wanna check the U-joints. That's something that is pretty easy to change. Just like this front end stuff, this isn't deal breaker stuff for me. It's just uh, maybe negotiating material there. And, you know, again, the owner may not be trying to screw you. They just may not know. So get under here, check the uh, U-joints. A lot of times you can get a screwdriver or something and kind of pop this back and forth and pop that back and forth. And if you feel play in this, it's a problem. You can also look for leaks um, right there and look underneath for leaks all around it. But uh, you're probably gonna have leaks, so that's not an issue. But uh, check for U-joint play, both U-joints. All that checks out. You probably got a decent vehicle. Now let's talk about Ranger specific stuff. Slave cylinders. If you buy a Ranger, you're gonna know this term. On most vehicles with a manual transmission, the slave cylinder is mounted on the side of the transmission. On a Ranger, it's mounted internally over top of the input shaft. The input shaft is right, comes right out through here. Slave cylinder bolts to the transmission. That's where your line goes in, that's where you bleed it. These are known to fail based on design and based on lack of maintenance as well. The uh, seal in here can go bad and cause it to leak. I've seen this seal leaking here before, like coming out right here. 
you want to check this fluid, make sure it looks okay, make sure it's full, get underneath here because, you know, the owner could be sketchy and could have topped it off. Get under here, look in this little window, look at the slave cylinder, look at this connection. Is it leaking real bad? Is there fluid coming down from under there? Um, you know, you may have an issue there and it's kind of a hard part to change if you're not that uh, mechanically inclined. That may be something you might pass on the truck for. If everything else is perfect and that's bad, you know, it's your decision. Another thing with Rangers, on the back of the shift reel, let me touch my hand here. There are three plugs. I don't have them anymore. I uh, see that foam there, that metal underneath it, and then there's that round piece kind of underneath that. You can't really tell, but there's three rubber plugs there. Those will leak a lot of times. You'll see fluid coming down the back of the transmission. That's the number one killer of these transmissions is that fluid leaking. So if you see that leaking there, and uh, you'll know you'll probably have to switch those plugs out and really pay attention how it shifts and how it drives. If you see that leak, if the transmission makes any kind of whining noises, um, it's pretty much toast already. So if you see that leak and it makes a whining sound, you're gonna wanna pass on the truck if you don't wanna change the transmission. Don't let that scare you away from Rangers. They're great little trucks. But, uh, you know, hopefully that was helpful to you. And uh, hopefully you won't make some of the same mistakes that I did buying a cheap truck or car, you know. They're great learning experiences. You know, you're, you'll think you can't ever do a certain repair and then you'll surprise yourself when you do your research and you're, you're able to do it. So, for again.